Hey, I've got a new feature to show you. It's the ability to program your um, your Tiny G or your Gerbil device, or frankly any Arduino or Atmel chip from inside um, from inside Chili Pepper. And so you're uh, you've got this new little icon right here that says Program the Board's Firmware. And you also have a, a, a feature there. Now, what we'll do is I'm going to get you started from scratch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to your servers, download serial port JSON server. 1.83 has the Arduino firmware program in it. So I'm on Windows 10. So I'm going to download the 64-bit version of serial port JSON server. I'm going to open it. And notice there's an Arduino folder. Now, don't make the mistake of not extracting this. I, I've had some users write in. Um, who did not extract and they just double clicked serial port JSON server and the problem is you don't get the Arduino folder and I'll just take you quickly through what's in here there's AVR dude which is the programmer for 8-bit um, uh, Altmet chips and BOSAC which is the programmer for 32-bit for the Arduino Duet so those are very critical tools um, and you want to make sure that in, well, you don't have to worry about this, but in this text file, there is an extra, I know it's not showing word wrapping, or sorry, line returns, but tiny g is in there. And that's a little different than what you'll find from the uh, Arduino team. Uh, okay, so we've got this. I'm going to launch it. Oh, it's not liking. Um, I have to exit my other... I don't know if a lot of you know this, but you can show high console and you can type exit and it will actually exit the um, the running server. Now I'll go and launch my new server and it's asking for the firewall. Of course, I want to allow access 1.83 and I will connect to localhost and there we are. We have our two ports. Um, I'm going to turn off this console because it gets a little confusing. Okay, so we have this port and this port, and we want to program it. So I'm going to go ahead. This is the tiny GV8. Uh, it's this guy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick tiny GV8. It does not detect that automatically, unfortunately. Um, but notice when you pick it, it gives you... Um, links to download the latest firmware. Not all of these, like if you're going to program an Arduino Uno, um, that won't give you links, uh, although I do have some links in here for Gerbil. Um, but we're doing the V8, so I'm going to do the 440.18, and I'm going to go ahead and hit program. Now notice when I do that, the program light goes, it starts running, um, and it's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, again, you need serial port JSON server version 1.83. Uh, unfortunately, if any of you are watching this that are Gerbil users, that is not working well for Gerbil at this point. There's still mangled text coming back, and it's still an unknown bug. The Arduino guys are looking into it. Um, also, I do want to thank the Arduino team for being the ones who built in the feature to program your firmware through Chili Pepper. Uh, they discovered Chili Pepper when they were um, looking to build their web IDE, their upcoming web IDE, and they um, asked if they could base it on serial port JSON server, and of course I said yes, it's all open source anyway, and now we all benefit. So there you go, it's programmed, and I can go ahead now and connect to it, and there I am on 440.18. So, looks good, was able to do that. now. I'm going to show you how to program the G2. Now, what's a little bit unique about G2 is it's a, it will run on, I'm going to pull this off, but it will run a, a G shield. So you're, for those of you on Gerbil, you are all familiar with it. Um, but this is the programming port, and it's an FTDI chip. And I'm going to, uh, you have to connect to that. Notice then if I hit refresh, I get Arduino Dewey programming port on COM5. That's pretty different. I was on COM3 and 4 earlier. So now I'm going to program it. It will detect that it's an Arduino Dewey programming port. That's not good enough for us, though. right? That's right here. We actually have to pick G2 Dewey plus G Shield programming port. We don't have to, by the way. 
but you might as well because it gives you these links to download the latest firmware. Of course, if you have a custom firmware, uh, go for that as well. So then I'm going to go ahead and hit program. The download's quick. The programming is a little bit slow on this one. It takes over a minute. Uh, so again, it's using BOSAC on this one. Um, BOSAC is for doing 32-bit uh, environments. Um, this will... You can also program from the native port on other platforms. I have found that the current version of BOSAC does not program the Dewey from Windows. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe they're working on a fix for that, but at least for now you can do it through the native programming port. I will show you after this do is done programming how to do this on the Raspberry Pi as well. I use a Raspberry Pi 2 as my main machine now. I don't run localhost and you can do all of this same programming through the Raspberry Pi as well. Um, so almost done. Almost there. You can see all the blinky lights going. Okay, done. And then I will go ahead and pull the plug on it. I will reinsert in the native USB port. I'll hit refresh. And now we have our tiny GG2 COM3 and COM4 programmed and uh, firmware 87.01. Presto. Now, just to show you that this also works not from a Windows box, but also from a Raspberry Pi or a Mac, uh, I'm scanning my subnet and there's my Raspberry Pi 2. My John Ada is actually my laptop. So I'll connect to that. And I've got a couple different devices hooked up to this one. Uh, yep, the FTDI, this is a, uh, that's a tiny GV8. That's a G2, which is a Due. This is, um, I actually think that's a, uh, an Uno or a Gerbil device. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to program this guy from the native USB port. And that's, it even detected native USB port, same firmware. Actually, just to prove it to you, I'm on the 87.01, well, let's actually see what firmware I'm on. Oh, I'm on 86.03 firmware right now. So what I will do is disconnect, which by the way, you have to be disconnected to program. Uh, the code isn't smart enough to ask you to disconnect. And I will down rev it to uh, 087 edge. And let's hit program. Now remember, it's running at native USB speeds now, which is about 2 to 3 megabits per second. So it should run way quicker. There we go. We're already done. And then CPU reset. Reset not supported for the CPU. Unfortunately, I might be out of luck because it's downstairs um, to reconnect. But let's see if we got lucky. No, we did not. Here, let's see if we can connect and then send a reset. I doubt it's going to work. But that is the new... I, I, I did just... If I had that reset, I have successfully reprogrammed that. Um, what we'll do then also is we will reprogram a, uh, a V8 as well. So actually, before we do it, let me show you what version this V8 is on. Uh, 441.08. So let's disconnect and um, we will, it doesn't detect the V8, so you have to manually do it. And we'll do, eh, we'll do the experimental version just to prove it to, oh, no, because it's on 441.08, so we'll move it to 440.18. That is a different version. And program. This will run at roughly the same speed. Remember, the V8 uses AVR, dude. This is being executed from a Raspberry Pi. Uh, again, thank you to the Arduino team for adding this feature into uh, Serial Port JSON Server. Um, I think this is uh, maybe another 5, 10 seconds. And remember, 441.08 is what we were at. Okay, looks good. Maybe I do done, and it should now go to 440.18. So let's connect and sending its init scripts. Hmm. 
Here, we'll reset it. There it is, 440.18. All set. I'm trying to show you the output here. Oh, it's it's filtered. Um, but anyway, yeah, we're good to go. So I just programmed a tiny GV8, a, a, um, a Arduino Due for the tiny GG2. I did it from Windows 10 and from Raspberry Pi to uh, remotely, which is super cool. Um, and uh, that's available in the new serial port JSON server 1.83. Enjoy.